so this is it uh, this is the last section of the of this uh, of this uh, lecture the maturation of abnormalities now remember uh, this is the oft uh, asked in assessment in vivas in, in in SEQs and in MCQs in all formats this is where the urinary bladder as far as the subject of physiology is concerned uh, you'll be asked uh, basically uh, high probability that you'll be getting questions from the clinical abnormalities the, this slide onwards okay so it's 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 basically all you have to remember really is the reflex arc we mentioned that the whole thing starts with stretch receptors which are the receptors of this reflex arc then you have the afferents which are sensory nerves traveling in the pelvic nerves uh, anatomically going to the sacral segment their integration happens, interneurons uh, uh, are activated, which then lead to the signal leading to efferents, which are basically the parasympathetic fibers. And uh, they, they are the motor fibers in this reflex uh, are the efferent motor, as we say, and they go to the reflector organ, which, is, which in this case is the diffuser. Just keep that reflex arc in mind and a footnote, there is no mention of sympathetics, okay? So the lesions will be on three lines. It, what if afferents are cut? That's scenario number one. Scenario number two is what if you cut both afferent and efferents? Okay. And three, you keep all of this to intact. So the, in, the, so the reflex arc, the basic arc, the, seg, the spinal segmental arc is, is, is intact. However, the descending pathways uh, are, are severe. Uh, which I mentioned just a, a, a while ago, that any lesion completely transecting the spinal cord above the sacral region, uh, sac sacral spinal cord, uh, will interrupt those facilitatory inhibitory uh, signals, uh, very important ones coming down from the brain. And you can uh, infer quickly what will happen in this case. So moving on to lesion number one, it's called deafferentation. So it's the selective uh, damage sorts to the afferents only uh, uh, very quickly let me just uh, start from the bottom uh, in syphilis infection uh, you have uh, a, what, 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 what we call a tibetic bladder so this is an infection which basically affects the dorsal root you know that the dorsal root of the spinal cord is where the sensory information comes in this is the rule of the spinal cord dorsal uh, sensory information uh, comes enters the spinal cord uh, through the dorsal horn and the motor output of the spinal cord is basically through its ventral horn. Okay, so this is the, there are some diseases, uh, infect, infective diseases, uh, uh, syphilis being the most famous one, which affects the dorsal roots primarily, and hence it basically messes up the sensory afferents uh, of the of the bladder, uh, along with a plethora of other issues. Uh, but since we are discussing bladder, so. Uh, the bladder gets uh, deafferented. Okay, uh, then there are some specific crushing injuries. Uh, it's it's uh, it's rare uh, that a crushing injury of the pelvis would just take out the afferents. Usually, it's the entire pelvic nerve, which basically means afferents and efferents. So when we'll talk about uh, scenario number two, crushing pelvic injuries come on top of that. Uh, here, if somebody asks you, you can mention the selective dorsal root lesions, uh, and and syphilis comes to mind in that. So what happens in deafferentation? Reflex contraction, reflex contraction of the bladder abolished. You studied this uh, when you were when you were little, actually, in the early classes. That reflex arc is the basis of the functioning of a reflex, and if you interrupt the reflex arc anywhere in its in its pathway, the reflex cannot happen. Simple, simple. So you have taken out the uh, the afferent. Obviously, the reflex will not happen. Okay, it will be abolished. What happens to the bladder? Well. You obviously are not stopping the urine. It keeps on collecting, distending the bladder. It becomes thin-walled, uh, hypotonic, although there are some contractions uh, which are based uh, on the fact that smooth muscle, when stretched, does try to contract. So these are not maturation contractions. They are just uh, tonic contractions. Uh, uh, this is a habit of, of uh, smooth muscle. So when the, uh, the whole thing, the whole system is flooded with urine, uh, uh, the capacity is overridden and uh, droplets then uh, tend to overflow. We call it overflow incontinence. So the person has uh, uh, 
uh, no micturation, micturation reflex going on. Uh, uh, the bladder is is uh, is uh, uh, over distended and and over um, uh, overflowing uh, of urine happens, and and this person becomes incontinent, which means that he has to let go of the external sphincter to release the pressure uh, on the bladder. It is it's not graceful. It's uh, it's not social. It's uh, it's uh, it's a bas basically uh, uh, a messy situation. Okay, so that's that. Uh, then you have uh, the, those crushing injuries, uh, which takes out the entire pelvic nerve. So both afferent and efferent go. We call it denervation. So basically, you've studied this word in terms of uh, in, in relation to muscles. When the when the supplying nerve gets cut, we call we say that the muscle has been denervated. So this is that denervation. Uh, the bladder again <clears throat> becomes flaccid, distended for a while, but then but then uh, uh, it becomes a bit active. Uh, which is interesting, expelling dribbles of urine out. This uh, uh, eventually it becomes hypertrophied. So it becomes so active that it becomes hypertrophied and shrunken. It's like a, a crunched up football. Okay. And this hypertrophy, uh, last time I checked, uh, the, the cause is not known. Uh, so this is the denervated bladder as opposed to the deafferented bladder, which is distended, thin walled, hypotonic. You have denervated bladder which first is flaccid and distended but eventually it's shrunken and hypertrophic this is an important distinction to note then you have the the, the last part uh, which is uh, spinal cord transaction and remember i mentioned sacral segment so if you have a sacral segment a suprasacral segment uh, transaction of the spinal cord first as you have studied in uh, sensory physiology sensory cns physiology is that any damage to the spinal cord first leads to uh, a spinal shock like situation. So everything that the spinal cord does goes into suppression. The bladder will go down, flaccid, unresponsive because all of the reflexes are, are just sort of switched off. And we are not talking about just the micturation reflex. We're talking about all reflexes of the spinal, of the related spinal cord segment. Uh, in spinal cord, it's generic, uh, everything, goes mute uh, so together with all of with all of that you have also uh, micturation reflex which uh, becomes un, un, uh, 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 unresponsive uh, the bladder gets uh, filled overfilled uh, again you have overflow incontinence during the spinal shock uh, scenario however after spinal shock is over micturation reflex returns now you may ask what is going on uh, we have a very serious uh, uh, injury to the spinal cord and uh, how come micturation reflex would return? Well, the answer I've already given you is, is that this lesion is above the level of the uh, sacral segment of the spinal cord and the reflex is integrated in the sacral segment of the spinal cord. So you don't disturb that. You cut the spinal cord above the sacral segment. So the, the integrated uh, spinal reflex, which is the micturation reflex, the reflex arc is intact, uh, the whole reflex is intact, hence just after uh, spinal shock is over, uh, micturation reflex returns. However, of course, it, it won't be, it won't behave very nicely. Uh, it will, it will behave uh, as, uh, as a rube uh, uh, cousin of yours. Uh, in the sense that it will do whatever it wants, okay? Uh, there won't be any voluntary control because voluntary control was exerted by the descending fibers coming from the higher centers, which in this, in this case, you have cut. So there is no voluntary control and very important uh, uh, thing to note uh, that uh, the, this deviation from normalcy uh, is, is there. There is no inhibition or facilitation from the higher centers and this is called automatic bladder. So what, it, what, what will happen is that uh, as opposed to denervation de and uh, deaffrontation, this uh, bladder has the micturation reflex uh, going on, and, but it, it, uh, you don't have any control over the external sphincter, very importantly. Uh, so what will happen is it will run its course, do the micturation, uh, self-regenerative incremental contractions, and that will just, uh, the micturation will be triggered, 
the reflex will be triggered and it will be immediately followed by urination. So you, you can imagine that there is no conscious control of urination because you've lost all that. So this is automatic bladder. It has a mind of its own and it's, it's on automatic. Lastly, there are some higher center brain damages like uh, head injuries uh, uh, or, or, uh, or, or uh, uh, cancerous uh, growths uh, in those segments of the bonds where the micturition center sits or the cerebral cortex itself or, or strokes which cut off the blood supply. Whichever way, if there is brain damage in the areas which control micturition, higher centers that is, uh, you have a situation called spastic neurogenic bladder. Okay. Uh, these are terms which you need to uh, look up and, and remember because these are the terms which are used in your assessment. Uh, an examiner can simply ask you what is an automatic bladder. You have to come up with all of this. Okay. Uh, the examiner can ask you overflow and cont continence. Uh, when do you, do you have this? Uh, you will say the affrontation and during spinal shock of uh, uh, spinal cord section. Um, so in that context, spastic neurogenic bladder uh, is when higher centers get affected, get damaged. Uh, the, bladder the, the, bla the whole bladder again becomes uh, a hypertrophied, shrunken, uh, 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 contracted uh, organ. Uh, but the, the, the reason for this is basically because of the overdrive, overdriven micturation reflex, which in this case, uh, is automatic and uh, there is no, nothing to stop that and uh, it's uh, uh, it's the whole spasmodic uh, 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 picture that you get uh, in any upper motor neuron lesion as you have studied in motor physiology okay <clears throat>